Hi everyone, this is Anna from Koala Soap. Tonight I'm joined by my daughter, Kaylin. Hi guys. And we're going to show you how we make um, a swirl using this mold in our uh, melt and pour. So the first thing we're gonna do is melt these down and then we'll go ahead and show you what, how we do it. Okay, so we've melted our melt and pour. I still have some, a little bit in here that I can feel. How about you? Um, I feel like one little bit, and okay. that's basically it. Okay, so Kaylin has picked her scent. Now, I, I'm going to do one process that I know works, and then we're going to experiment with Kaylin's. Um, <laughs> we're using the Brambleberry scents um, from the spring, spring sample collection. Spring, uh, sample. spring fragrance oil sampler kit, and we are using red apple. You're going to use red apple. Yes. Okay. It's right. So yeah, there it is. here's red apple from Bramble Bear. It's a, their little sample kit. I highly suggest you get it. Um, now the trick here um, you is you want, a, you want these to get kind of cold. Um, when you put in your dropper full of your scent, it can actually drop the temperature there by about 8 to 10 degrees. Um, and so Kaylin's right now at about 150. You really like this? Yeah, a little I love bit that more. Smell. Okay, we'll put the rest in there. Mm, good? good? Okay, and then I'm going to use lime. That's what I'm going to use lime. I'm going to use a different dropper. Okay. Well, that smells good. The two scents mixed together. I know, actually. It actually like smells this. really good. It does smell good. Okay. So what you want to do here is you want your temperature to drop as low as you can before skin starts. Now this one's at 140. Kaylin, yours is at 147. Seven. So if you don't have one of these thermal guns, thermal guns, I guess that's what it's called. Yeah, infrared thermometer. Infrared thermometer. Um, if you do this enough, you'll actually feel it getting thicker without even seeing a skin. Um, I try to get my temperature down to about 129 to 130 degrees. Um, and so we just keep mixing it. And then we'll come back when it's a little bit lower. Okay, so mine is cooling down a little bit more than Kaylin's is. You really do, for this, you need these spouted um, measuring cups if you could possibly get it. So mine right now... Is reading 136. Kaylin, you're at about 142, which is good because Kaylin's never done this before and she'll be able to see me do one and then she's on her own. Yeah, this um, is good. I'm going to be doing uh, what what I do for the color is I'm going to use the uh, Aqua Lab colors from Brambleberry. It's very concentrated, it's mixed with distilled water and then it's refrigerated. But what we wanted to see is if a mica would do it also. So we have some Stardust micas that we got off of Amazon, and we mixed hers with distilled water, not alcohol. And you'll see why in a second. So this will be Kaylin's. And this one will be mine. What's yours at? 135. So we're getting long. Yeah, let's check it. Mine's, see right. it. Mine's starting to get a little thick here. You're at 135? Yeah. Oh, me too. Okay, so when we're ready, what Kaylin's going to do, I guess she, you can use this since it was just your fragrance in it. Okay. Um, what, I can't do it though, because mine's, I have to use a new one for me. Um, what Kaylin's going to do is she's going to take a dropper full. She's going to watch me do mine first. You're not going to do yours. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going to, basically, you're not going to mix it once you put the lab color in here. You you're going to just drop it in. No and you're no streaks, no alcohol. What? Because it makes it go, and you want this to be kind of cold because it's cold oh, as when possible. When you pour it in, though, it'll. Okay. So yeah. So what'll happen is hopefully, I did this twice last night and it worked. So we'll see. So I'm like now about 128. So I'm about ready. So yeah, if you can put yours on that side. So Kayla, I want you to watch exactly how much I put in. You have to be really careful. Okay. Um, and if you start to see a skin, then we're going to have to heat you up. You want to do it right before you get a skin. Okay, so I'm going to put this here. I'm going to mix a little bit more. I don't have a skin yet, thank goodness. 
I'm gonna check my temperature. This is detergent-free shea butter from Crafter's Choice um, that I'm using. I'm at 126, so I'm trying to get as low as I can go. And I've already put my scent in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm right, I think I'm right there. This little skewer here. After you're done, can I check mine? You can. Okay, I'm at 127. Okay, so Kaylin, this is important. So we all want to squeeze out all the air in your pipette because you want to get as little air as little air as possible in here. So I'm only going to go up. You see that? About right there. I don't know if you guys can see that. About right there in the dropper. Okay. Um, isn't there measurements? There are, but, oh, I, but it's not I can't see it. <laughs> okay, so you're at about one, it looks like two. Let's just say half a dropper yeah, is full. Let's, yeah. Okay, so my it's cold. I'm just going to drop this in. Squirt it hard in there. Don't stir it. Let it do what it's going to do. Then I take a whisk. I don't know if you can see this. Take a whisk, and I go down and up once. That's it. Then I pour. Don't touch it. See, look how pretty that is. Oh. I have a little extra. Use another one. Now, oh, here's our issue. Is I know what you guys are thinking. What am I going to do about those bubbles? Um, I would pop them. <laughs> So I, I take the skewer and I pop as many as I can. I really don't want to squirt with alcohol until the last possible second. So I actually will, I'm going to let that cool down a little bit more. Then I will spray that top with alcohol. I'm at 125. You're at 125, so we better hurry up with you. Okay, okay. Kaylin. So do you see you're going to pour in these two squares, okay? okay. Yeah. And you're not getting the skin yet, so let's... You're at 125, so now we know we, on this particular brand we can go down to about 125, but she's getting thick, I can feel it. So, she's gonna just take her distilled water and mica. Good, good, about half dropper full. Squirt it in hard. Okay, she did that. We're gonna take the whisk. Just put the whisk down, turn up. That's it. Now, Kaylin, you just pour. Go ahead. Probably should have put a little bit more in yours, but I, I'm actually yeah. kind of curious to see how, how it works. So pour the rest into the other one. That one's really pretty. I'm going to take your skewer. Wait, can I see that skewer? Sure. Okay. And now what we're going to do is I wouldn't, let's just let it go. Well, watch this, look. You can do that, but you have to be careful because what could happen you is mix it, it too much, it'll yeah. turn, the bar will turn pink. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna let these set. When they get a little bit cooler, I will spray this with alcohol. I'm not gonna do it till it's cooler because I kinda want this swirl to set in here. So there's air bubbles here, there's air bubbles here. Ken has a few here. Um, what I have done is I've tried to pop some of them with the skewer. Some, it sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. But what I'm gonna do is once it starts to harden up just a little bit more, I'm gonna go ahead and I'll squirt and I'll get rid of those, but at least it won't make the color dissipate. When you're washing with this, I understand that the colors concentrate in certain areas. These are all about 112, 113 right now. It actually doesn't leave anything on your hands if you're worried about that. It, it, it acts just like regular soap. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to squirt this little one here and we're going to see what happens. But you can see, see how it makes it dissipate there? We really don't want that to happen too much, okay? So here we go. Oh, no. So if you can see what happens here. Yeah, but mine doesn't have much pigment, so it's going to, yeah. So yeah, Kaylin's doesn't have a lot of pigment. But so the, as soon as alcohol hits this, that's when it starts to get really, really shaken up. Like a watercolor. Yeah. So let's just kind of see how these turn out. We'll come back and show you the finished products and some other soaps that we had done earlier. It's kind of like the milk and dishwash. Right. <laughs> you think? But it's a new, it's a process that I'm trying to perfect. Um, and so we'll be back and we'll show you how it turned out. Everybody. Okay, so these have set. It took a little 
bit longer for them to set um, until we went to bed. <laughs> but I, I'm getting ready for work and I wanted to go ahead and unmold these and, and let you know how it turned out. Um, Kaylin can't be with me. She's still sleeping. So I'm going to get her up at the last possible minute to get ready for school. But so here they are and we'll go ahead and unmold them. And as you can see, it's a really nice marbled effect. There's that. And here's another one. Kaylin actually likes the design on this one a lot. She likes this. She says it looks like lightning in clouds or something like that. And then there's a little bit of a marbling effect there. And then these were Kaylin's. So these were done with the lab colors, which were liquid and pre. Um, uh, pre-made and refrigerated from Brambleberry. These are Kaylin's. These are the ones that we did with just the regular mica powder in distilled water, not alcohol, remember. Okay, you guys, it works. You can do it. There you go. This is the one that we had a little bit of mixture left, so we really couldn't pour in a lot. There was just a real thin layer, so this one I don't know about but the top looks good but it's only like half a bar Oof. and that's the back so the issue with this is you have to you have to do a full bar because you have to pour the whole thing in so it disperses this okay but we can do it with the powdered micas and that's awesome news these are some that I did with these are also lab colors this is really interesting designs I will probably try to do this in a loaf mold. I'm just, uh, I kind of want to see about temperatures. Um, as far as the goat's milk go, you can use, it It would appear, any type of goat's milk. Um, I used uh, the detergent-free shea butter on these. Um, but yeah, I think it actually works. Um, we're going to go ahead and we'll try a loaf mold probably in a couple weeks because I have some other projects going on. But I did promise a... A Facebook group I would get this video out so you can do this I don't make that much soap but it's nurses week and since you know I have to go to the hospital now I'm gonna wrap these puppies up and so these I made before um, and I'm gonna be giving them to some of my friends so you guys have a wonderful week and this is Anna from Koala Soap